I'm really pleased this morning to welcome two of my friends and former colleagues to HASP to talk about Waterfront Holland, a community engagement initiative to formulate a vision and a framework for the future of Holland's waterfront. First, Keith Van Beek has been city manager of the city of Holland since February of 2018. Before joining Holland, Keith served as city of Kentwood city administrator and was the deputy county administrator for the county of Ottawa. Keith is a graduate of Holland Christian High School, Calvin College, and has a Master of Public Administration degree from Grand Valley State University. He is the chairperson of Community Spoke and the current board chair of the Greater Ottawa County United Way. Dave Coster has been the general manager of the Holland Board of Public Works since December of 2011. He served in prior positions as the BPW's Director of Operations, Power Resources Director, Production Engineering Supervisor, and Power Supply Engineer. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Michigan Tech University. Dave sits on the Board of Directors for Lakeshore Advantage and is active as a mentor for the West Ottawa High School robotics team. Keith and Dave will discuss the development of the vision and guiding principles for Holland's waterfront, as well as future steps to ensure that our waterfront will be a source of civic pride, both now and in the future. Please join me in welcoming these two important community leaders to our stage. Good morning. And Thank you so much for having us. Um, first, Larry, we both had several jokes too, but I'm getting the sense maybe we shouldn't tell them, right? <laughs> there will be more time for question and answers then. No, ju no, just kidding. We're so happy to be here, and I can't tell you just to see this great crowd that represents the larger region um, and that there's the interest and support um, for what happens in this community to make sure that we're continuing to march forward and making this a place where people love to live, work, play, and I'm guessing maybe some of you retire, right? So uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, so we're, we're going to do something here. We're going to hit something three times. First, you have a handout in front of you that we invite you to take with you later. Um, we're going to start with a video, and it's a, it's a little bit longer video, it's about a five minute video, um, and you're the first large group to see it. It's a video that kind of encap encapsulates where we find ourselves at this point in time. And we also want, wanted to do this video so it really um, memorialized, if you would, the work, the very important visioning work that we've done up until this date. After the video, then you're going to come back and you're going to hear Dave and I talk about and see if we, you know, can, can align with the video and we'll say the same thing for the third time, right? We hope. We hope. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep each other accountable to that. But we're just thrilled again to be here and we're thrilled and I think what you're going to find as you go through this, that this was the community's vision for our waterfront. And it really is something that now translates over into a lot of us um, to figure out how we're going to, you know, really cast a vision and start talking about and really taking steps of action over the long term to really um, make this, um, these concepts come to life. So with that, our tech assistant is going to cue up the video. Waterfront Holland was a community engagement initiative between 2018 and 2019 to formulate a vision and framework for the future of Holland's waterfront. Led by the City of Holland and the Holland Board of Public Works, and in partnership with Holland Charter Township, the process took a comprehensive, inclusive, and transparent approach to gathering public and private input. Through a year-long series of community meetings, surveys, design workshops, and tours, 
your ideas and aspirations have yielded a vision statement and a set of guiding principles. The vision statement articulates the character and the unique sense of place the community desires for Holland's waterfront. The guiding principles express our core values and serve as an evaluative lens for any future developments proposed near or along Holland's waterfront. Embodying these two foundational documents is the Waterfront Holland Vision Diagram, a spatial framework to steer the city's long-term development and planning policies. The framework synthesizes the four exploratory concepts generated over the design workshops, including the Working Waterfronts, Downtown North, Water Penetration, and the W Edge. These concepts are not mutually exclusive. Instead, they serve to capture the potential range of uses and ways in which the waterfront is layered into our community. The Working Waterfronts concept celebrates and preserves both our economic and environmental waterfronts along the Makatawa River system. The Downtown North concept focuses on shaping the character of North Downtown as a new neighborhood anchored by an artisan atmosphere on 6th Street. Water penetration introduces blue fingers into the land by carving out community marinas and bringing the water closer to downtown. The W Edge concept revitalizes the urban wedge between 8th Street and Window on the waterfront, while re-establishing the original edge of Lake Makatawa with a public promenade. The Waterfront Holland Vision Diagram highlights four key elements common to the concepts. First, the creation of three distinct districts, the Anchor District, Harbor District, and Uptown District, also known as the North Downtown District, centered around the Verplank site, the James D. Young Power Plant, and Window on the Waterfront, respectively. Second, the promotion and provision of a continuous, publicly accessible path along or near the waterfront that integrates the Makatawa Greenway, Heinz Walkway, and existing city parks. Third, the definition of two important intersections at Pine and College Avenue that indicate prominent points of arrival at the waterfront and the importance of enhancing 3rd and 4th Street as key east-west connectors. And fourth, improvements in connectivity to the greater downtown in terms of vehicular, pedestrian, bicyclist, and boning connectivity, as well as the seamless weaving of the waterfronts and green spaces with the broader downtown. We are grateful for your voice and your participation in shaping this collaborative community vision. To lay the groundwork for this vision, we will be working with the waterfront businesses to determine our shared interests and the possibilities not only for their properties, but also for the James D. Young Power Plant site. In addition, we will be collaborating proactively with developers, nonprofits, and existing properties on potential projects in the three districts. To enable these future developments, the city will explore potential infrastructural investments, including roadway conversions and street extensions. It is important to bear in mind that this shared vision will be a long-term endeavor spanning the next 10, 20, and even 50 years. As it unfolds, we will continue to pay attention to environmental sensitivity, recognize the varied yet valuable roles that the natural, public, residential, and working waterfronts play, enable meaningful public-private partnerships, and encourage intentional, incremental investments that honor our community vision. Thank you for joining us on this momentous journey. As we work hard on bringing this vision to life, May our waterfront be a source of civic pride both now and in the many generations to come. To get information or to access the visioning reports, visit waterfrontholland.org. All right, good morning once again. My name is Dave Coster. I'm the general manager of the Holland BPW. And many of you probably know, but the, the BPW provides the utility services for the city of Holland. And within those utility services is the electric utility. And, and so, you know, my role here today really kind of started with this opportunity that came to us uh, by way of uh, retirement of one of our major assets in our fleet of electric uh, uh, generation, which is the James DeYoung site, the James DeYoung power plant. 
Uh, that power plant actually burned its last coal back in uh, April of 2016. And because of that, we now are faced with this decision about what to do with that site long term. And, and really, that is an opportunity that was not really faced, this, this community didn't really have that opportunity to really consider that uh, for about 60 or 70 years that that plant was in existence. And so it, it opened up you know, what we thought was a really important point in our history of our, our community and, and setting an expectation going forward to not really just think about that site in a vacuum without a larger process or context around that. And so when you think about that site, it's about a 17-acre piece of property along the lake. And the other thing I think that's really interesting is if you have been in this community for a long time or understand some of the history that's there, that power plant really sat on an area of land that didn't exist back in the 1930s. All of that area that is at the bottom of the hill between River Avenue and Pine was reclaimed from the water back at that time. And so with that context in mind and this large parcel that really is a key piece of thinking about our waterfront, we want to step back and really think about how best to establish a process for looking at uh, that site, but not just that site alone, but that site within this larger opportunity of thinking about our waterfront in Holland. And what's important with this diagram here is if you see the De Young site, it is one of many um, sites that have an impact on our waterfront that are kind of strung together, uh, kind of like uh, it's been referred to as a string of pearls on a necklace, all the way from the Holland Energy Park up on the east end to the uh, Collin uh, Park and then ultimately the Heinz Walkway on the west end and several other key spots in, be in between which really enhance our waterfront and give opportunity for many different uses in our community. And so what we decided to do was something that we've done in the past, really. And it's really not uh, Keith and me that can be really credited with this. It's really something that we look to those that came before us in our community. And one individual in particular I want to make sure that we give a lot of credit to this morning is Bill Johnson. I don't know how many of you might know Bill Johnson. Uh, he's been very quiet and unassuming, I would say, in this community, but he's had so much to do with what's happened with our beautiful downtown over the last several decades. Uh, and it's really this wisdom of framework thinking that he brought forward that has allowed that to happen. So what is framework thinking? Well, framework thinking really is casting a vision and set of principles and being something that's aspirational. You know, we think about uh, zoning and code as being kind of a minimum standards for development. Framework thinking goes way beyond that. It really establishes this aspirational vision for what the community is looking for. And back in the late eight, uh, 1980s, that was done here in Holland. Matter of fact, the, in the lower right-hand corner of the screen here as you're looking at it, that is the downtown Holland vision that was established just before 1990. And, and another individual that should be credited with that is Gordon Van Weilen. Gordon Van Weilen and Bill Johnson and, and many others at that time recognized the opportunity that this community had to not just do something individual or small, but think really big picture about our community long term. And that vision statement that was created there has set in motion a series of investments and infrastructure improvements that have led to what you see now in our downtown, everywhere from the East End all the way from Fairbanks or Chicago Drive to this newest addition of the block that's immediately to the east here with that redevelopment that GDK had a lot to do with. And all of that, you can say, is within the context and within the vision that's here. So again, now with our waterfront, we have this opportunity to really create a vision and set of principles that future investments can be looked at through that lens and judged to whether or not they are meeting our expectations. And so this is the process that we really aspired to, was one that we start with this need, work through visioning, 
principles, refinement ultimately into concepts, and then into plans and finally implementation. And that's what we're going to talk through today, uh, is how we walk through that over this last year and what that's led us to. So again, it is a filtering process. You start very big picture, and you want to look at you know, this vision. And again, that takes engagement with the community in lots of different ways. And Keith's going to talk about that, but I'll tell you, when Keith first got into the job, one of the first things that I said to Keith was, guess what, Keith? Uh, you and I get to go have 22 individual conversations with key groups and, and people in the community to kick off this process. He hadn't even started the he job. He hadn't even started the job yet. And so, you know, what we did was a very ambitious early engagement with key stakeholders, the businesses that are on the waterfront, other key property holders in the community, key groups making sure that we are very inclusive in our outreach. But it's starting with that vision. You then work into the principles, establishing those, and then ultimately concepts, and all the way down to where we are now, which is getting into the implementation phase. And it's very important when you look at your diagram that you have on your table, and we're going to talk more about each of those going forward, we're not defining uh, actual outcomes here. What we're defining are potential scenarios and concepts. And those are much different than plans. Concepts are really things that try to uh, you know, take this vision and principles and represent it in some way. A plan is a very specific action that hopefully is in alignment with that concept. And, and so we have the de Young site which emerged, but then as we thought more about this and we started through this process, we realized that the areas that influence our downtown and we can call Waterfront Holland really go beyond the James DeYoung site itself. And so what you'll see talked about today a little bit more is the DeYoung site, but also this area called North Downtown, which is also known as Window on the Waterfront, which is a beautiful area that maybe has been a little bit, um, you know, not activated, I would say, as much as it could possibly be. Um, and so what kind of opportunities are there? There's also an area that you'll see uh, uh, called the uh, uh, Anchor District now, and it's really referred to as the Verplank site. So we have a lot of key waterfront businesses in this community, and one of the things as we wa walk through this process that the community told us was what about this possibility of maybe moving some things around the waterfront to open up, up other opportunities in other areas. And so this process is also considering that. But it's also important to understand that there are multiple jurisdictions here involved. Holland Township across the water, the City of Holland, the Downtown Development Authority itself and some of their interests. We also have a smart zone in Holland which is really set up to encourage infrastructure development that really moves things forward into this new century of, of information and other types of economy, uh, data economy that can, that can emerge from that. You know, what do those aspirations say about this plan? So what we deformed is a group to really have a, uh, a multi-jurisdictional involvement and Holland Township was involved, representatives from a lot of key groups were involved to help Keith and me through this process of public engagement. And I'm gonna talk, turn it over to Keith so he can talk about how some of that public engagement went along. Thanks, Dave. You can tell Dave's been a good partner in this, can't you? Even, even if he hit me up before I started the job, so. So let's talk about what that community engagement looked like. Um, you know, there was, right from the beginning, a commitment to do engagement well. And with the wisdom of Bill Johnson and others that Dave already mentioned, we had a great example of a successful use of community engagement in this framework thinking. So we were immediately, we, we wanted to be inclusive in how we did that community engagement, which wasn't just inviting people to events and then like the people that, whoever showed up, well, that represents the community. We went out to a lot of different groups, um, at least 12 community outreach events and invited design workshops. We wanted to be in tr as transparent as possible, which is difficult sometimes these days, right? Um, there are a lot of different ways that information can, can go out. One of the ways that we would encourage you, and we've 
we've kind of pumped that several times is waterfrontholland.org was kind of the, was the central um, clearinghouse for all information um, that we gathered and you could spend hours on that site going through all the reports that we use through this process. We also definitely wanted to be comprehensive. I think Dave did a great job of talking about, you know, I would talk to some people that maybe initially said, well, just talk about the JDY site. And we wanted to be very intentional that we expanded the scope and the context of it and be comprehensive in this framework thinking that we, that we used. I'm going to show a picture of some of the open houses and outreach events and the tours that we had because there's some good stories behind those pictures. But um, beyond just Bill, we also had a team of fantastic local experts and consultants that we utilized. Um, while the planning staff from the city of Holland, led by Mark Vanderplug, um, was definitely engaged and did a lot of work um, with and on behalf of Dave and myself. We also had planning staff from Holland Charter Township, but we also had consultants that we brought in that had specific expertise in running processes like this. And in particular, of the many skills that they had, I know they did a fantastic job of listening to verbal and other input in depicting that in sketches. Um, and it was just a, a fantastic thing and a talent to watch. Um, so let's take a look a little bit. Up there you see, you know, we had over 1,300 people attend the various events that we had. We had well over 2,800 ideas, and partly because this is an iterative process where we didn't like just say, okay, we made that decision, we moved on. We continued to refine the concepts and refine the process with good ideas that would come in. You see a word cloud down here in the lower left-hand corner, which basically helped us distill and find out what were the interests of the community and all the people that we were talking to. And you're going to see in that word cloud a lot of the values and a lot of the characteristics that then eventually became part of our vision and guiding principles. Key public takeaways though that we had quite early in the process were that there was an interest in increased recreation along our waterfront, that our waterfront could become more welcoming in multiple different types of ways including access, that there were public considerations, as Dave talked about, that there are private property holders that have had very important contributing businesses to our downtown and on the waterfront for years. Again, that the public wanted more places to play. I'm going to step out here. That there was more of a desire for programming year-round. In particular, this was important because, you know, I think we all realize that there's lots of things to do, um, you know, when the weather's better. What did the speaker say? When did we ever think it would be sunny and enjoyable on a February, right? And we are very proud of our snow melt, and I thank Dave often for the snow melt that they provide to us. But there's definitely a desire to have more things that maybe during these types of times, how can the community gather? Inclusivity, we wanted to make sure that it was a place for all ages, abilities, and incomes. And connectivity is a huge thing that um, has, has been and continues to be high on our radar. Um, sustainability in all senses of the word, um, and it's definitely something that we wanted to embrace and celebrate our waterfront. So here's some pictures. In particular, you see the, the boat there in the bottom center? We had a great plan that on a Saturday we were going to have people come out and take boat rides and kind of see the waterfront from out on the water. And we just had tons of comments about, wow, I've never really seen it from this perspective. It really kind of opens up our eyes 
Um, the problem that day is that it was very windy and it was unbelievably cold. <laughs> um, so yeah. no matter how well you plan, sometimes things don't go great. Yeah, it gets a little choppy out there with a lot of wind. So yeah. I saw a few of you going like this. Maybe some of you were out on those boats. We 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 uh, we had our fire department on call to uh, to to uh, help if there were any problems. There were tours, though, also of the James DeYoung plant on the inside in October through November. There were a couple dates that we went out there, which I know, again, heard some fantastic comments of just the thrill that people had to be able to get into that icon that we've had. Um, but pretty cool, too. I mean, when, when we say we reached out and involved the community, we tried to involve everyone, including a couple very cute kids there on the bottom that sketched out their own ideas of what they'd like to see um, in the waterfront. So here is one of three things that ultimately council, city council has adopted. And I think that's important to note. There's a lot of information and Dave is gonna talk about the concepts in a moment. But the only thing that council adopted is a vision statement, guiding principles, and then a vision diagram that, again, picks up on what we did once before. So I am actually going to read the mission statement, and I do not have a great radio voice. We had a couple of those inserted, but I really think it's important because we put such high value on the vision statement that I'm going to read it to you. Our vision statement, Holland's Waterfront, a distinctive and welcoming complement to our greater downtown, weaving together water, land, and people in a continuous thread of beauty and vibrancy, an adaptable and evolving place that celebrates a harmony of urban and natural uses and strengthens our economic and environmental sustainability a walkable year-round destination where water views abound, green spaces offer quiet respite and active play, and connected public access to the water is enhanced. This is the character of the waterfront we seek. So the guiding principles then, and I'm, I won't read all of this in the same way that I just read the vision statement because you have this to take along with you also, is the key words there is first we definitely want to foster community accessibility we definitely want to pursue environmental and economic sustainability we wanted to uh, encourage diversity of use users and developers and something that i think we do real well in holland and we want to continue to do we want to celebrate we want to celebrate this resource that we have, how many communities have what we have in a downtown that also has this opportunity to extend to the water. You know, one story that I'll tell when I was able to come aboard and do this and talked with um, the wisdom of Bill Johnson is he talks about that one thing with our window on the waterfront, which I'm suspecting many of you are aware of. He says, you know, we really made a conscious choice back in that time where we created window on the waterfront, but we really reserved it for a date and time in the future. And how, how smart is that, right? And, and we really feel that we're entering into a time where we can start to fully understand the value of that property and figure out how to activate that in such a way that really builds upon this vision and these guiding principles. I am gonna come back in a moment and talk about the third item that council adopted, which is the vision diagram, because I think that's really helpful to understand how then we're going to take this vision and principles and move into implementation. But first, Dave is gonna come back and talk to you about the four concepts. All right, thank you, Keith. And you know, Keith didn't spend time on any of the individual comments underneath there, but you should know that those were all very uh, carefully identified because they are now 
really the evaluative criteria for us. They become this opportunity for us to look at anything that comes forward, whether it's publicly driven at this point or privately driven, to be able to be this lens to look at that particular opportunity through this and say, is it achieving what we're looking for in terms of these principles and vision? And so now that we had that, and I think the other thing to mention that's really important is that that happened in great part in this facility up in that room through a public process. A lot of people came out on, I think, a December night um, and worked through the stakeholder feedback and the word cloud to help us craft that vision statement and the principles, the key words that emerged from that. And so we want to thank all of you that participated in the community in general because you had a great voice in identifying that. But now that we have that, this is where the creative process really kind of became very fun and, and visually stimulating, is that we had these really talented individuals in our community come together and with the words that you brought forward, took that community vision and um, that community desire and tried to represent that through different concepts that emerged. And the four concepts that actually are on your diagram as well on the back side of your diagram, you know, take a different approach. None of them is really mutually exclusive as well. I think that's important to know. They do try to address things at all of these district areas that have been identified, the Anchor District, the JDY, called the Harbor District, and then the Uptown District. And then different activations and different possible outcomes in terms of programming and other end results at each of them, just to kind of tease out some, some opportunities. Again, to be aspirational to the private sector ultimately. And so the concept one, in terms of the working waterfront, again, is to celebrate and respect the fact that these waterfront businesses are key to our community in terms of employment, tax, water utilization, and the value proposition that it brings back to the community through the fact that the products that are actually transacted at those businesses have a direct impact on road projects and other things that are going on that help the economic climate in our community, but to reshape them in a way so that maybe we can consolidate them and then open up another opportunity. So what you see here in the Anchor District where the Verplank site is today is really different because the Verplank operation in this particular concept is moved to the De Young site. There's a consolidation there that allows for us to maybe take advantage of the northern area for some interconnections over to Holland Township and maybe some recreational opportunities and residential opportunities there. And some different type of activation down at the Anchor District that could be some places for public space and uh, some retail maybe an extension of, of 8th Street now visually as well. When you look down 8th Street past the Civic Center, you're looking and be able to see that view shed of the water and to get access at that point. And then you see some residential development kind of being activated north of 6th Street with this as well. So it's respecting and keeping that waterfront presence there, but then figuring out how to actually integrate around that. Concept two is really more of a focus on downtown north, as we call it, or the uptown district. You see a lot more going on there in terms of building that out, seeing that uh, transition to that waterfront that's still protected and natural along the window on the waterfront area, but more activation just between that and, and uh, the 6th Street. A little bit different type of feel around the anchor district, or maybe now you have a little bit of a marina presence starting to take shape there. And then on the northern edge there, there's a little bit less of a industrial presence in this particular case. The other thing that's key here is that the, these people that sketch this are so talented that when we actually saw this as the final result of the concept, there are multiple iterations and phasing that they also designed into this. So none of these things even would have to, if it became prescriptive in terms of it actually following that concept to a T would have to happen all in day one. They thought through logically about how this might actually evolve over time as well. But you see a pretty, rec a pretty significant recreational opportunity on that northern edge develop and, and some really interesting pedestrian crossings now that connect Holland Township. I think one of the things that struck 
a lot of people that visited the James e. Young site and the and the people who did a lot of the work in designing and coming up with the concepts is just how close that is when you're at that part of the channel it is right there and so what a nice opportunity to create that that connection physically as well as visually with Holland Township each of these respect those four nodes as well I want to make sure that we highlight that that in this particular case what you see there in terms of the nodes on the northern end, and that's third and pine, uh, uh, and uh, um, I'm sorry, fourth and pine, and then uh, fourth and uh, college, I believe it is, um, are these key intersections that really are pivot points uh, for you to be able to logically be able to see the connection east-west that emerges. And so, you know, right now when people think about the De Young site being developed for something to give public access at that site, sometimes it's difficult to see because North Downtown really hasn't become what it could possibly be. But once you see that activate a little bit more and you see this pivot point potentially develop at 4th and, and, and College, now some things actually become more logical from that east-west perspective as well. And you kind of see that being called out here with those nodes that are developed. And then this is a little bit more fun kind of thinking about how water can play an important part in realizing some of our desired outcomes from a vision and principle standpoint as well, with starting to introduce water at different points. So now you've got this area that we're at right now with the Civic Center, and you have water really kind of coming all the way in uh, here, pretty much to the edge of where the Civic Center property is. Keith's gonna point it out, because he's taller than I am, and also because I'm at the microphone. So, all right, uh, and, and what a nice, uh, mirroring opportunity that this e uh, emerges as well because if you look at the de Young site in this particular concept the building is actually retained converted to some other public purpose that could be there and just like this building and that building have very similar time frames you know in terms of the era that they were originally built that there's sort of a mirroring effect here that's going on between the two and then the playing in of water with a smaller marina setting maybe smaller boats more transient boating coming in on the north end. The southern end here being maybe allowed to be more cruise ship, you know, type of uh, docking structures with that. And again, a low-scale mixed-use district at the anchor, and again, the residential development on the north downtown side of things. And then because sometimes when you do these concepts, you have to dream big and really kind of test the parameters, this is the one that shocked everybody, I think, when, we, when it came out of it. Is, this amount of water that actually is penetrating in, we call this the W edge. Uh, and the reason it became that is because the word wedge sounded a little bit divisive. Um, and it was really a wedge that sort of led to this when you think about it, that we really understand a great deal of what's there from 7th Street down to the south. Pretty much 8th Street is developed, we understand what that looks like. We understand what is in that northern area of the window on the waterfront. We kind of have this area that is shaped like a wedge coming out from those two things as being undefined and an opportunity for us. So they developed this concept, which is really dramatic, in that it brings the water in. Obviously, the industrial presence has gone at this point. Uh, and now you see the water returning to what was there before. Again, when I mentioned earlier in the talk that the water originally was down to the base of the River Avenue between river and, and pine. So this is really kind of restoring again what was natural in the history of that waterway and then allowing for that boating presence to come in and take advantage of that. All of these concepts also what's important with them, another key feature is that Pine Avenue becomes a very important connector to realize the overall connection of being on or near the water. So being on the water doesn't necessarily have to mean that every foot of the way along that you're on it as opposed to near it, but that you have an ability to have a logical, safe connection to allow you to experience the entirety of the waterfront in a, in a non-disturbed or non-interrupted way. And so Pine Avenue takes that feature and, and emphasizes that in each of these concepts you know, along the way. And again, one thing that's also common is this connection to the north side that you see here. And because of the industrial presence being either pulled to the south or gone uh, in, in the future, 
is this opportunity maybe to provide some, some of that pedestrian or maybe ve vehicular um, connection to that north side through that connection to Holland Township as well. Uh, and, and oh, one more slide I have before turning over to Keith. Again, this is, I think, in, in your packet as well. It's a little bit tough to see. Um, but these are just some representations of the buildings that, and, and structures that you might see in each of these districts. One thing to point out in particular uh, is this up, upper, in the right-hand side, kind of in the middle, is another key feature is that the height of River Avenue relative to the other areas provides an opportunity for thinking about our building structures and the height plan that's there because it's the tallest area. And so what you see represented there is really kind of maybe a taller building at the River Avenue area and then thinking about that building height as you go down so that view sheds are maintained and you have that visual connection as well as the physical connection to the waterfront. But these are just some of the representations of possible buildings and developments that are each of these, each of these concepts. So as you can tell, we worked a process, right? And it was very deliberate, deliberative and inclusive, and we had some fantastic partners that helped us through that process. So what are some overarching takeaways that we have? And again, I won't go through all of these in great detail, but it builds upon, and you should continue to hear some of the words that you heard in the vision and in the guiding principles. So we want, when we think about our waterfront, to really expand the definition. That it's not just at the JDY, but it's all the way from the Holland Energy Park, where it feels, and it is, a river, as it moves into a delta, as it moves into Lake Makatawa, and all of those spaces are important, and we want to figure out how to treat that as a continuous zone. We want to aspire towards continuous public access and that this is going to be a plan that lives and is looked at and is active for decades. So what that means is it's not going to change overnight and that what we're looking for is that connectivity but it may not all be right on the water but we are looking for a way that you can continuously and safely trans tra traverse this entire area, this continuous zone that we talked about. We really want to preserve our water views and enhance our water views and have more water views. And that's everything from access to the water, but also the view sheds that Dave just talked about. Connectivity has always been something that um, has been near and dear, I think, to Hollanders and that we think of that where it's not connectivity just to and from downtown, but it's our neighborhoods even that adjoin the downtown. And how can we integrate that and always build more and more connectivity into the city that we enjoy? Um, we really want to be intentional about the, the inherent form and character of the topography that we have. Again, Dave did a great job and just think about, right, as you go along Pine, and as if you just, you know, walk that sometime and take a look at the natural topography and recognize the history there that at one point you were looking down at water or at marsh and that that's been reclaimed in a good Dutch way, I guess. We still have those connections, don't we? That we do want distinct districts and mixed use, uses, and that's where I think you know, the uptown or the north downtown or the harbor. What we don't believe is we need to take what 8th Street is downtown and say, okay, that's what everything is going to be. We think that would be a mistake. We think that this downtown larger area and the vibrancy of that is actually built if we have different distinct districts that complement each other. And then we definitely want to be very um, conscious of building scale and density and engagement with what we built but what we approve for private people to build. And that's where you may have heard that we're actually um, taking a look at our historic zoning ordinance which describes 
historically, it, it, that really was an approach that was used across all of the U.S. that emphasized what types of uses primarily were on property and maybe didn't pay as much attention to the form or what was built on the property. And we are rewriting that ordinance right now into what we're calling the Unified Development Ordinance. Shortened to UDO, we're very good at having acronyms in government, if you haven't noticed. And our UDO really has an element of it in it that it talks about a form-based code. And it's a shift, and it's a shift that we're not just doing here in Holland. This is a shift that's happening more where we're more interested in the form of what we build and what we approve, and not always quite as much as about just what the uses of that building is. So I promised that we were going to come back to this vision diagram. So one of my predecessors, a couple back, was Soren Wolf, was the city manager, very successful, very talented guy for many years. Jody, probably 20 years or, or more that he served. And he told me a story and he said, you know, Keith, this vision diagram, when we did this the first time for downtown, you need to understand, and I do remember this a little bit as a kid, that downtown was a place where we were trying to sell people to invest in what we had. But sometimes when we did it, we'd walk into a second story of a building and we'd be shooing away pigeons. That, that was the, remember, that was the character at one point of the downtown that we had. And we went through this process back then, and through that process, almost like through magic, but it's not, it was intentional, we ended with what we have today. And Soren and I had a conversation, and I said, okay, so how did you take vision and guiding principles and a diagram and implement something? Because as you might suspect, some of those conceptual drawings now, I go, how am I going to make that happen? And Soren, in his wise way, said, you know, Keith, what I did over the course of two decades is any and every time we had a conversation about something that was going to happen in that downtown area, I took out that vision, and I took out those guiding principles, and I took out that diagram, and I put it in the middle of the table. And it was a reminder for me and staff, but it was also a reminder for those private developers and those private investors to make sure that whatever they were proposing or we were thinking about, that it contributed to and it moved that vision forward and that it wasn't something that was in conflict with that. Now that sounds a little bit easier than what it is, of course, we all recognize that, but I, I, I think that was so wise. Um, so that's what we're going to do moving forward. We're going to have this vision and that diagram and, and those principles in the middle of the table. And the way the development works, right, is there are certain things that the city does. We make investments in parks and we can make changes in roads. But ultimately, most of what's happened downtown and most of what's going to happen moving forward here is on private property, and it's going to be investments by private corporations and individuals that say, you know what, we see the vision, and we want to be part of that vision, and we want to invest in making Holland this aspirational future that we want. So. Yes, there's some proactive things that the city will continue to look at doing that drives towards this, and we hope that just doing this vision, but also those investments that we make publicly, really encourages and invites the private sector to also come along and help us build this future. So speaking on that, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I want to make sure that we reserve some time for question and answers, and I'm sure you'll all give us really easy softball questions, right? You know, that's fine. Um, is what's next? And there's a lot of preliminary basic moves 
that our consultants and our community and, um, and us as staff believe that things that we can do moving forward. Some of those, and I'm not going to go through all of these, are, you know, again, on the proactive nature, what can the city do? What are some investments that we can make in our downtown? So we're talking about window on the waterfront. What can we do in window on the waterfront? Um, can we make an ice rink that's a community gathering place, that's that year-round um, attraction? Can we put in some kind of a natural playground park where even more people say, boy, that window on the waterfront is underutilized. We really can make that being one more vibrant place that's near to our downtown. We're going to talk about roads. We're going to talk about, you know, could we, should we, what would it look like if we maybe extended some of our road network into kind of the fringes of that window on the waterfront and that that actually would help activate that and make it even a better public space, not a worse public space. We certainly had conversations about Pine Avenue that in some of these concepts, maybe we could realign Pine Avenue, make it kind of a sense of a new waterfront that even if it's not right on the waterfront, and maybe in partnership and conversations with our working waterfront private owners, maybe that's something that is beneficial to them and beneficial to us, and we think that it you know, really moves this vision and this aspiration forward. We're committed to connectivity. So how can we continue to have that continuous connectivity, but also how can we have downtown and the near neighborhoods of downtown have better and even um, easier access to some of these waterfront destinations? Believe it or not, I talked to several of you, and there's a lot of friendly and familiar faces out there that ask, when is Snowmount going to get to Freedom Village, for example? <laughs> yes, I see that. And uh, we were hoping maybe it was an outside chance, but um, knock on wood, this time next year, um, we have a plan and we basically have it in place where we're looking to extend that snow melt right, right to Freedom Village. So that'd be an example of improving and um, that connectivity. So the last thing that we'll say and talk about here is where, again, we are in this process. We really wanted to have, and we used the word, the crescendo approach, where we wanted to engage with the community, we wanted to get input, we wanted to build together that vision and those guiding principles. And now we're to the point where we've worked our way through that, we've refined the concepts, and now we're at implementation. So just as we had partners that helped us and consultants that helped us build everything that you saw today. Um, I expect, and we'll be talking with council here soon, where we expect that we're going to have partners and consultants that help us in this implementation phase also. Um, so as we take a look at the market feasibility of things that might happen on public space, that, but quite frankly could happen on private space also, we want to make sure that um, what's being built and maybe incentives that would be asked of the city are done well and that they make sense and again that they build towards this vision. Um, but they will also help us particularly in a waterfront setting um, where we would have some expertise that, that really um, says boy if you're taking a look at some of these uses Where's the best place to put them? What's maybe some of the operational realities behind some of those uses? So we're committed to moving this forward, but I think in good West Michigan fashion, we're also committing, it, committing to doing it well, and we're also not in a hurry. Um, this is just as we've developed and redeveloped our downtown into what we have today. That was a multi-decade process. And we believe this is a multi-decade process also. So with that, I think we've talked at you for probably long enough. And maybe we're getting close to that time, but 
we're probably pretty much right on it. But I'll defer to your program folks where if you either want to do Q&A, that's fine. Otherwise, I know that I'm able to stay back a little bit so you can come and find me up front here and I'd be happy to talk to you more. How about if, should we take maybe two, three questions? And, and if people get up and, and walk out, we won't be offended, I promise. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot about access to the waterfront, and perhaps some of us might be concerned given the projected rise of oceans, rise of lakes, that that access might be more than what we bargained for. <laughs> Are you making plans for the possibility that Lake Michigan, Lake Macintyre will rise maybe a foot, maybe two feet over the next decades, centuries? Great question. The, the, the short-term answer is we actually have a great team that's working together from the BPW and the city that's taking a look in it and has actually charted out using GIS technology of if the water goes up by these different increments, what does that reality look like? Um, and it also provides those challenges, right? Because there is an element where, boy, the public wants the access right on the water and yet in that sense, that could be the most problematic and potentially you could lose that access if it goes underwater. And there's a lot of cost associated then with rising and, and lowering water. So the answer is I don't have a really great answer for you right now because it's kind of a work in progress, right? But we are very aware of that and taking a look at that all the time. And I think that needs to be part of a, our considerations moving forward. Yes, so if you go to waterfrontholland.org, there's multiple videos and there's detailed reports. I think there's like a 178 page report and there's a Good light 50 page version and a four page version. So in any uh, bite sized bite that you prefer, it's out there. Oh, I like how the city manager's giving this to the BPW guy. Uh, yeah, no, I know, exactly. No, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, no, you know, we're not, we're not considering a, a public taking of, of property. Uh, we think that there are a lot of opportunities within the public spaces that are there. One of the things that people might not know is that when you add up all of the linear footage along the area of the scope that we've talked about, about 80% of it is under public control um, right now. Um, and so there are a lot of opportunities to inspire and to move things forward from a development standpoint that if it makes sense then for the private property holders to kind of come along with that vision after a period of time, then that will, that's great. Um, so we don't see the urgency associated with that. And matter of fact, we see that those private holdings that are there are really important aspects, important uh, elements of our community. So we're trying to work with them in a cooperative, uh, and, and, it, and the reason we're drawing concepts on sites that are currently owned by people is a representation of that willingness that they had in this process to allow us to do that, to explore this, this possibility. And so we think that's encouraging and we don't think we have to move into any sort of discussion of, of public taking the property. Hi, I don't really have the process to come with the autonomy and the electricity that's going to transform our uh, four-wheel sector and whether that's going to affect how you use the roads, the parking, other uh, charging stations, et cetera. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, this is an important conversation as it relates to our community energy plan as well. We're working diligently on how to look at our transportation sector of our community and, and electrify that as we change our portfolio in the Holland BPW to be less carbon intense, you know, de decarbonize that portfolio. We think there's an opportunity for the community as it relates to more electric vehicles. But beyond that, we're following the whole mobility evolution that's there because autonomous vehicles are right behind that. 
and, and along with autonomous vehicles, you have this maybe shared or pooled use of vehicles that could really change the need for, for um, roads in terms of the magnitude that's there. So we do think that there's some flexibility though within roads and you've seen that in other places where that's been talked about is that maybe instead of two lanes or three lanes of traffic with autonomous vehicles, you have one lane and it's, it's a shared road system now because you have more biking opportunities and other, other uses within that road system. So we do think it's flexible enough in this plan to, to allow for that, but it is a very careful consideration as we think about reshaping roads, as we think about how to get people to the actual activation and destinations that might emerge from this long term. So it is a key part uh, of, the, de of the development process to be thinking about transportation. Absolutely. I think that we have reached the end of our prescribed time here. Uh, the speaker has indicated he's willing to stay behind for a little bit if you do want to speak to him. Thank you so much for sharing this, this significant community project.